The device I built is called a laser harp. It's a little different than existing laser harps because the beams travel horizontally, but the idea is the same. When the laser beam is blocked, a note is played. Each of the six layers of the device have two lasers and two photodetectors, totaling 12 notes. Laser diodes are positioned in adjustable mounts, reflect off a mirror, and then hit photoresistors. The signals for the photoresistors and lasers run down the side of the device to the electronics in the box underneath. On the front panel, you can see two speakers and an audio jack for connecting headphones or bigger speakers. To turn the internal speakers off, this latch button is pressed. One knob controls the volume, and the other knob controls the type of instrument. I preloaded 20 instruments on the Arduino. The current instrument is displayed on the instrument wheel. You can watch how the instruments update as I cycle through them. On the rear panel is the power jack, power switch, reset button, and USB output for uploading programs to the device. Now let's open up the bottom. First I unscrew these four bolts and then take off the bottom panel by prying it off with a small allen wrench or screwdriver. The Arduino and the Adafruit Music Maker Shield, which I highly recommend for easily producing audio signals, are placed here in the box. You can see the switches, potentiometer, and rotary switch at the front, which are all read in by the Arduino. The Arduino also reads the photoresistor signals and can turn the lasers on and off. The cables from the photoresistors come down from the top through four holes around the device. Here you can also see the instrument wheel, which is turned using a stepper motor and updated by the output of the rotary switch. Here's the CAD file of the laser harp tower, which I designed using Fusion 360. In the rest of the video, I'm going to go over the sub-assemblies of the device and the assembly of the integrated system. The first part I'm going to go over is the mirror mount assembly, which I've just highlighted in blue. There are two mirror mount assemblies per layer, totaling 12 mirror mounts. Here's a close-up look of the mirror mount assembly. It consists of five parts and a one inch by one inch mirror. First, these brackets in the back slide into place like so. No glue is required. This is a friction based mount, uh, uh, connection. The mirror then slides into place and if you look closely here, you can see that there's a, a little bit of a lip on this bracket so that the mirror stays in place. To make sure the mirror doesn't slide out, I have these C mounts that slide into place over the mirror to hold it firmly without falling out. The next sub-assembly I'm going to go over is the kinematic laser mount and photoresistor mount. There's two per row. Here's one in this row here. The laser diode sits in this position, right here. The laser propagates, bounces off of this mirror, and then hits the photodetector that's right behind this diffusive material. The mount is kinematic because it's difficult to align the laser beam with the photoresistor without some sort of fine-tune adjustment. So in the back here, bolts come in and push the laser in the right direction. 
Here's a close-up of one of the assemblies here. The first thing I'm going to do is move this wall with the photoresistor out of the way. Oop, let me And we'll start by focusing on this assembly with the laser. The laser diode is right here. So it fits into this small block. It's glued in and coarsely adjusted to align with the photoresistor on the other mount. To push this laser back and forth, there are these spring-like parts that are flexible. Now I'm going to pull these bolts out of the way here. You can see the way that these bolts are held in place is there are four nuts embedded within this, this module right here in the back. These are uh, glued together, these three pieces here, one, two, three. So I'll also move these parts out of the way. And this final part in the back as well. Now you can more clearly see how the laser is fixed in this, in this mount right here. And as these bolts are screwed in, they push in these positions to tip and tilt the laser beam. The arms, these spring-like arms, slide into position like so. So I'll move them out of the way here. And one more arm. And now you can take a look at the, the full assembly. These two parts are, are glued together here. Now this front part uh, includes the photoresistor. The la this laser beam doesn't eventually hit this photoresistor that, because there's two lasers per row. So let me just go back here. So here's that, the, the laser module bounces off the one mirror and hits this assembly back here. And within that assembly is another laser right here that's bouncing off of that mirror and then hitting the wall that is, the, the wall holding the photoresistor of the module. first part I'm going to take out is this one right here. There's actually no glue in, in this mount. Uh, this is all friction-based connections. This little piece right here is from a film canister. It's a really nice diffusive material that's been cut to slide into place. Let me try to move this out again. There we go. So the first thing is to in assembling this part of the module is to curve the plastic from the film canister to slide it into place. That part then gets pushed into here and the photoresistor is right in this section here. If you look at the back you can see where the photoresistor leads come through. Wires are then soldered to these two pins and go down to the Arduino. The laser also has uh, a 5 volt and ground signal that travel down through the device through this hole right here.
After completing all the mirror and laser assemblies, I stacked up each layer of the laser harp. There's one more sub-assembly I wanted to go over in detail in the laser harp. It's the instrument wheel, which you can see from the front here. Before going over that, I just wanted to remove some of these front panels here so you can see how the bottom part is assembled. There are openings in this layer here for the layers of the bottom to slide into. I'll remove that now. And you can now see the front panel behind these knobs is the potentiometer and the rotary switch. With this panel gone, we can see the one sub-assembly that I wanted to talk about in detail. This instrument wheel displays the current instrument being played and is turned with the stepper motor right here. The position of the instrument wheel is determined using a Hall effect sensor. It's positioned right here. And there are two magnets, one facing north and another facing south. It's not displayed on the CAD file, but it's positioned right here. As the wheel turns, the Hall effect sensor is turned high or low depending on the direction of the magnet. Using this information, you can calibrate the motor to be oriented at a particular instrument, the starting instrument of the device. Here I'll play an animation displaying how the wheel is assembled. You can see this end part that slides in over the axle and the bottom part that slides out here. There again is where the Hall effect sensor sits. There's a few of these circular parts to slide over the axle. There's one part that's 3D printed. It's a coupler for the motor and the main axle here. These parts of the axle are glued together and slide through the wheel. Each section on the rim of the wheel displays a single instrument. These parts slide into this joint right here. Now it's time to display the assembly of this instrument wheel in real life.